So in a very Bob Menendez-esque situation, Congressman Henry Cuellar, a Democrat, probably the most conservative Democrat in the House, has been indicted <laughs> on foreign corruption charges, him and his wife. Again, very much like Bob Menendez. Let's put this up on the screen. This was the uh, press release issued by the DOJ. Headline here, U.S. Congressman Henry Cuellar and his wife charged with bribery, unlawful foreign influence, and money laundering schemes. I'll read you a little bit of the details here. They say, according to court documents beginning in at least December 2014 and continuing through at least November 2021, Cuellar and his wife, accepted, allegedly, approximately $600,000 in bribes from two foreign entities, an oil and gas company wholly owned and controlled by the government of Azerbaijan, and a bank headquartered in Mexico City. The bribe payments were allegedly laundered pursuant to sham consulting contracts through a series of front companies and middlemen into shell companies owned by the wife, Imelda Cuellar, who performed little to no legitimate work under the contracts in exchange for the bribes pr paid by the Azerbaijani oil and gas company, Congressman Cuellar allegedly agreed to use his office to influence U.S. foreign policy in favor of Azerbaijan. In exchange for the bribes paid by the Mexican bank, Congressman Cuellar allegedly agreed to influence legislative activity and to advise and pressure high-ranking U.S. executive branch officials regarding measures beneficial to the bank. Oof. I won't go through all the charges here, but the potential prison time is quite significant because you know you not only have these you know conspiracy to commit bribery of a federal official and to have a public official act as an agent of a federal of a foreign principal you've got bribery you've got wire fraud you've got money laundering i mean just the money laundering is 20 years in prison on each count and there are five counts of money laundering so this is no little oopsie slap on the wrist if he's found guilty and if his wife is found guilty, you're talking about potentially significant prison sentences. And, you know, par listen, this is obviously on its face an important story. A member of Congress say, charged allegedly taking money from a foreign government basically and saying, hey, I'm going to use my position of power here to do your bidding. And Cuellar is relatively <laughs> senior. He was co-chair, I think, of the Azerbaijani That's caucus, right. which is apparently a thing in Congress. But also worth recalling, that Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party leadership moved heaven and earth to keep this man in office, even though the FBI had already raided his home. So it's not like this came out of nowhere. We knew for years that Cuellar was being looked at by the FBI, and yet we can put this up on the screen. So Cuellar was challenged by a progressive, Jessica Cisneros, very close and hard fought race. Pelosi came out and aggressively supported him, saying, I'm supporting Henry Cuellar. He's a valued member of our caucus. The FBI has said he's not under investigation. Oh, really? I thought you were going to take it to choice or something, which is a reference to the fact that he's also not pro choice. Yes. He is pro life. He's like, one of the only Democrats left in the House who is conservative on abortion. And he's also like, you know, that's okay. That's one thing. He's also told corporate sellout. I mean, he's pretty conservative across the board and especially noteworthy given the post ops climate and how important choice has become. It's like the saving grace of the Democratic Party or their fig leaf or whatever they're holding on to, um, grasping onto with their fingertips. So she overlooked his anti-choice positioning and overlooked the FBI raid, which we can um, put up on the screen, C4, which happened year, back in 2022. Yeah, so this was all the election. this was all well known in order to keep this guy in power. So this is back from 2022 FBI raid on a House Democrats home related to Azerbaijan probe. So a lot of this was already known. She stuck by him anyway. And the end result was put C3 up on the screen. Jessica Cisneros, his progressive opponent, lost by only some three hundred votes. So there's no doubt that the, you know, weighing in of Pelosi and the money that flowed into Cuellar, et cetera, to keep him in this position was definitely the reason. I mean, that was a determinative factor in Jessica Cisneros failing. And now you've got this dude who's indicted. Right. <laughs> Congratulations. Now, are Great you job, kick guys. Him out? They kicked out George Santos. So now what? Honestly, they should kick yeah, him out. Yeah, they should you know, kick they him really out. Should. I agree. Uh, but what we have here is, I mean, some of the, again, the details, just to go back, are so yeah. cartoonish. Wife was paid 120 grand. Congressman emails an Azerbaijani diplomat and says, I'm planning to give this speech on the floor of the House of Representatives. A year later, texts him to say is introduced legislation favoring of Azerbaijan. The diplomat replies, you are the best, El Jefe. 
<laughs> like, like he's like a mafia boss or something. Around the same time, he is entering into a series of corrupt deals with a bank in Mexico. And then in March of 2015, the congressman expresses concerns that the arrangement would be discovered and asked a bank at the uh, ask a bank official to quote, create a middleman to disguise the payments. He literally said, quote, we need to find another scheme. The cartoonish corruption wow. of some of the people who are in power here is just so uh, on its face. You almost don't even want to believe that somebody so, so stupid could be elected to Congress so many times from 2004, but idiocracy is real life. So these people are just as corrupt you know, as anybody would think. He's up there in terms of a cartoon level villain as Bob Menendez. And let's see if he pulls a Menendez defense and says that it was his wife's fault the entire time. Yeah, and, I was <laughs> thinking that too. Is he going to, because what Menendez was able to do is his lawyers were able to get his trial separate from his wife. Right, because of health issues. I think for his wife's health issues. Alleged. Yeah, she yeah. had some sort of a surgery. Or something right. was going on with her. I don't really know exactly what, but anyway, they were able to use that to get the, those trials separated and those cases separated. And then we reported on the fact that he's apparently planning to just like throw her under the so. bus in hopes of getting himself off scot-free. So we'll see what happens if Cuellar follows a similar path here. But I mean, you probably know more about this district soccer than I do since it's in sure. Texas. But this is one that uh, it's not a it's not a gimme for Democrats if he's no. out to be able to hold on to because uh, you guys know the way that um, Latinos have been, especially Latino men have been increasingly identifying with the Republican Party moving to the right. I think this part of Texas is, you know, one of the, the hotbeds of that type of, of party switching. So uh, the fact that he is, you know, facing these these bribery charges right could really be significant, especially given the tight margin in the House and how you know closely fought all of this is. So this could end up being really significant politically in terms of control of the House. Right, so this is the Texas 28th district. And the thing about the 28th district of where he is is that it, it he is very popular there, but it did have some of those large swings towards Republicans back in 2020. So mm -hmm. very likely that it could happen. It doesn't, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. This is the congressman who represents like Nuevo Laredo, which is across, from Laredo or in, 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 in uh, Mexico. And it's not much of a surprise. It's like, oh, you're telling me the guy who's on the cartel district is involved with banks in Mexico? It's like shocking and it's deeply corrupt. This has long been known about Henry Cuellar. People have been whispering it for years in mm -hmm. Texas. This is just a confirmation. This happened, again, this happened in 2014, 2015. So there's been whisperings about him for quite a long time. But that's part of the reason why the Democratic establishment has always tried to save him is he backs them up basically on everything. The reason right. that Pelosi loves him is that, yeah, even though he's pro-life, like he is, you know, a reliable vote, reliable fundraiser, knows a lot of oil guys, been around there for a long time, and they think he's like a checkbox in terms of diversity too. Mm. So he's a longtime enforcer for the Democratic establishment. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, it's it's one thing, listen, sometimes voters are complex. Sometimes right. they're like, eh, he's a little corrupt, but you know, he's delivering for our district. Right. We that's, still like the guy, that's right? That's quite common down where he is. Oh, it's, I, it's quite yeah. common in all kinds yeah, of places, places, to be honest with you, where yeah. you're like, yeah, but I know him, and ah, what are you gonna do, right? <laughs> Wasn't the case, though, with Bob Menendez. The minute those charges came out, yeah, he that's true. plummeted in the polls. Um, but the fact that he narrowly won his Democratic primary, I think, indicates that wasn't really the case with him in this district. I mean, if you have a you know ch challenger coming in, coming within 300 votes, and it's taking the Democratic leadership, you know, moving heaven and earth in order to keep your grip on that seat, I think that tells you that there wasn't like an overwhelming love for this individual in this district at this point in time. Yeah. And I can't imagine that these revelation of these charges are going to help his political standing or the political standing of the Democrats. So congratulations, guys. Well done here. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.